So Curb Machine has been updated. In the sidebar, there are now these sub-panels with links to local and online documentation, FAQs, and YouTube, as well as the Get Support tool. You can disable both of these via this little button here if you want. Also, we now have this Tools panel here. For it to be populated, you need to have an active curb object. So let me add a single point poly curve now, and immediately you'll see all the tools and spline and curve properties become available here. Note that I'm in edit curve mode already too. In an object mode, the tools will vanish, but some of the curve properties remain accessible. This is cool because the curve machine menu, where these properties can be adjusted too, otherwise only exists in edit curve mode. Let me get back into edit mode now and actually extrude some points here to properly create this curve. And so everything you could previously do from the menu, you can do from the sidebar as well now. Notice how when I click a modal tool, the mouse is automatically warped away from the panel so that the HUD is not occluded by it. I blendulate this point now. And previously, if you wanted to repeat the previous blend on a new selection, you would have to use the Alt Mod key while invoking the tool from the Curve Machine menu. Now you can do the same simply via the Blender Native Shift plus R key map. Do note, however, that due to how the tool works, the blend width is cumulative. It grows if you call it repeatedly on the same selection. So if you want to ensure the same blend is applied to different parts of the curve, you have to ensure you start from the same initial conditions from just a single point each time, for instance. Also previously, you couldn't blend the end of a spline, but now you can in fact do that. As long as you make the spline cyclic, you can then blendulate these endpoints too. This way, you no longer have to shuffle the cyclic gap to another location first. And again, Shift plus R to repeat. You can even do this with a selection that goes across the cyclic gap. Furthermore, you can now use the Alt key to quickly merge a blend to a single point instead of using the M key, or auto merging as I just did by moving the mouse all the way to the left. Unlike the M key, Alt doesn't toggle merging on and off with repeated key presses, but instead merges as long as you hold the key and stops merging when you release it. That's basically it for this release. All the other tools have been updated internally to modernize them and ensure compatibility with Blender 4. That includes the status bars of the modal tools, which now support extra wide icons too, and are more compact in general and better represent Boolean properties. The control key here, for instance, is wider than others, at least in Blender 4.3 and up. I quite like the exposed curve and spline properties in the sidebar. Even while in edit mode still, I feel like they are just a tad more accessible here versus having to bring up the menu for each adjustment, or God forbid, going to Blender's properties panel to do it. You can easily toggle cyclicity here or convert it to nerves, for instance, and of course, increase the depth and extrusion too. All in all, this is just a better curve machine.